Okay, we're about to find out these calculations are a lot easier to do in MATLAB, which isn't very surprising. As always, I've got the command history here loaded up with things I was trying out before I uh, turned on the screen capture. So I'm going to recall some of those so you don't have to watch me type all this stuff. First thing we're going to need is the A matrix. There it is. Again, as always, I've got the elements in the rows separated by commas and the rows themselves separated by semicolons. So hit return and there it is. I'm going to need a B vector. So I made that up. That'll be on the right hand side of the equal sign. So when I have AX equal B to solve, I'll type in the inverse of A times B. Well, what is that? Let's, let's make sure we know what the actual answer is. So there it is. So X1 will be three, X2 will be one, and x3 will be minus 2. Okay, with that, let's clear the command window and let's start working on finding x1, x2, and x3 individually using Kramer's rule. So to find x1, I need to compose a matrix whose first column is B and whose second and third columns are the second and third columns of A. So let's try this. I'll call it C1. Now there's B. Now, can I just tell it to add, to augment the second and third columns of A? Sure. So remember, it goes row, column. So I'll take all the rows and columns two to three. Does that look right? Well, that's clearly one, two, three. And I think that's the rest of column A. Now, if I take the determinant of C1, what is that? three, which was the answer we had before. All right, that worked once. Let's clear the command window and try again. So let's make a matrix now called C2, whose second column is B and the rest of it is still A. So C2 equals, all right, this is going to be a little harder to put together, but not much. So I'm going to say A, all the rows, column one, B, and A, all the rows, column three. Make sure I do that right. There we go. Close the square bracket. Hit return. There it is. Well, let's find the determinant of C2. Okay, looking good so far. If it worked twice, it'll work three times. Let's clear the command window. And now let's finish it up. We're going to define a matrix C3, whose third column is the B vector, and the rest of it is the A vector. So C3. Now I need A, all the rows, columns 1 and 2, and then there's the B vector. Okay, that looks good. And determinant of C3 is minus 2, just like we had before. So again, the big idea for uh, Kramer's rule is that you don't have to solve for all the unknown variables unless you want to. Using Kramer's rule, you can solve for just the ones you need one by one, and it's very easy to implement in MATLAB. I hope this helps, and we'll talk to you next time.